the hip bone is a large irregular bone that is made up of three parts that um, these three parts are the ileum all of this part the ischium and the pubis if we are going to look at it from the interior aspect this is the interior aspect of the hip bone the large lateral plate of the bone present superiorly is the ileum antero inferiorly this one is the pubis and then postero inferiorly this one is the ischium these three bones the ileum pubis and ischium meet with each other in the cup shaped hollow and this is a deep hollow which is called acetabulum this acetabulum forms a joint with the hip bone and it forms the hip joint the acetabulum articulates with the head of the femur the pubic part of the two hip bones if we place them here imagine them the pubic part of the two hip bones join with each other at the pubic symphysis posteriorly the hip bones articulate in the center with the sacrum and coccyx this whole thing will now be called the pelvic girdle for the side determination the acetabulum is directed laterally now i'm going to um, put it in my hand like we are going to discuss it in the vivas what we do is we put the thumb in this notch which is called the greater sciatic notch here and our fingers then are present in the acetabulum here so like this we hold the hip bone then when we say what the direction is the acetabulum is directed laterally okay so we are going to point this one laterally the flat expanded ileum forms the upper part of the bone all right and it it is present above the acetabulum then the obturator foramen is present below the acetabulum this is a part of acetabulum this obturator foramen is present below the acetabulum it is bound anteriorly by the pubis and posterior inferiorly by the ischium mm. all right now the anatomical position the pubic symphysis and the this pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine they lie in the same coronal plane so when we are going to talk about it we say that we are going to put the um, hip bone against a wall so this is how we hold the hip bone the pelvic surface of the body of the pubis is directed backwards and upwards all right backwards and upwards so like this the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine are present in the same coronal plane and the pelvic surface is directed backwards and upwards this is the anatomical position the symphysial surface of the body is present in the median plane the ileum this large expanded part of the bone is called the ileum the ileum is the part that forms the flank and it's it is it's this part is the part that is we can feel through the skin the upper part is expanded and the lower part joins the is ischium and the pubis form uh, in the acetabulum and it forms this joint and it forms two fifths of the acetabulum it has an upper end which is called the iliac crest extended and posteriorly its lower end is smaller like i said and fuses with the pubis and the ischium and forms two fifths of the acetabulum it has three borders this anterior border this posterior border and this medial border which separates the two surfaces we will talk about it it has three surfaces the gluteal the gluteal surface posteriorly then the iliac fossa or the iliac surface and the sacropelvic surface we'll talk about them one by one now first of all if we look at the iliac crest when we look at it vertically we can see that it is convex in shape 
right it is a broad convex ridge formed in the upper end of the ilia it can be felt in the living like i said it has if we look at it anteroposteriorly it is curved concave inwards in the anterior part and concave outwards in the posterior part the highest point of the iliac crest which is situated just below uh, just behind the midpoint almost here this is the part which coincides with the intervertebral space between l3 and l4 vertebra it has an anterior end which is called anterior superior iliac spine this is also a landmark that can be felt in the living the posterior end is called the posterior superior iliac spine this part is coincides with a, a dimple which is uh, present 4 cm lateral to the second spine of the sacrum morphologically the iliac crest all of this part is divided into an anterior 2/3 and a posterior 1/3 in its anterior two thirds the part which was concave inwards the iliac crest presents an inner lip this part an outer lip this part and an intermediate area almost 5 cm this is the anterior superior iliac spine almost 5 cm from the anterior superior iliac spine on the outer lip there is a projection which is called the tubercle of the iliac crest the dorsal segment is less prominent it has two slopes the inner slope and the outer slope with a ridge in between them if we talk about the borders we have the anterior border the posterior border and the medial border the anterior border extends from the anterior superior iliac spine and runs downwards towards the acetabulum this anterior border in its upper part has a notch then it has a projection this part is called the anterior inferior iliac spine in its lower part where it meets the acetabulum it is a rough wide and almost triangular the posterior border extends from the posterior superior iliac spine runs downwards and it is going to meet the posterior border of the ischium this is the ischium its posterior border it is going to meet the posterior border of the ischium a few centimeters below the posterior superior iliac spine is the posterior inferior iliac spine another prominence then after it it has a great deep notch which is called the greater sciatic notch we are going to talk about them later the medial border extends on the inner surface and it divides the iliac fossa or the iliac surface from the sacropelvic surface this is the medial border this medial border extends from the iliac crest above downwards towards the ilio pubic eminence if we talk about the surfaces of the ilium we had three surfaces the iliac fossa or the iliac surface the pelvi sacral surface and uh, or the sacropelvic surface the gluteal surface which is going to be directed posteriorly this was the anatomical position so first we are going to discuss the iliac fossa this part as it is con cave so it is called the iliac fossa all right this iliac fossa is directed upwards and it forms the lateral border of the false pelvis it is present between the anterior border and the medial border con large concave area behind the medial border is the sacropelvic surface this is an uneven surface and uneven surfaces mean that they are going to form some joint this uneven area is called the sacropelvic surface it is subdivided into three parts a roughened tuberosity which is called the iliac tuberosity 
then there is an auricular articular area and there is a pelvic area the iliac tuberosity if you look here we can see that it is slightly prominent as compared to its superior and inferior parts this part is the iliac tu tuberosity it is large roughened area that lies just below the dorsal segment of the iliac crest the auricular surface lies antero inferior this is the articular uh, this is the anatomical position so it lies antero inferior to the iliac tuberosity it is almost ear shaped that is why it is called auricular and it is articular it forms the sacroiliac joint with the sacrum it has some pits in it antero inferior to the auricular surface is the pelvic surface this is smooth and lies antero inferior to the auricular surface it forms a part of the lateral wall of the true pelvis all right we have two types of pelvis that are separated by this line in above it is the false pelvis and below it is the true pelvis so the iliac fossa forms part of the lateral surface of the false pelvis and the pelvic surface of the sacroiliac surface pelvic part of the sacroiliac surface forms sacropelvic surface forms the lateral part of the true pelvis then we have the gluteal surface it is a large surface as was with the iliac crest it is convex outwards in its anterior part and concave outwards in its posterior part and the gluteal surface is large so we can divide it into four areas by three gluteal lines all right as we uh, always do we are going to see its anatomical surface uh, anatomical position here so i am just rotating it this is the posterior superior iliac spine rotating it here just 5 cm behind the posterior superior iliac spine starts the posterior gluteal line it goes downwards and ends at the uh, just bill behind the posterior inferior iliac spine it all it is the shortest line then we have the longest line which is called the anterior gluteal line why because it starts behind the anterior superior iliac spine let me revolve it here as well this is the anterior superior iliac spine revolving it this is the anterior superior iliac spine so the line that starts behind the anterior superior iliac spine here it is the anterior gluteal line it starts almost 2.5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine it moves backwards and then downwards and ends at the upper border of the greater sciatic notch this was the greater sciatic notch and it ends almost in the middle of the upper border of the greater sciatic notch then there is a third line which is ill uh, mostly ill defined and uh, it is uh, not very visible this line extends just behind the anterior inferior iliac spine this was the anterior superior iliac spine this is the anterior inferior iliac spine it starts here and it moves backwards and downwards and ends near the apex of the greater sciatic notch